Hello friends, in the last lecture we talked about the basics of operational amplifiers, their characteristics, the differential and common modes, their parameters like CMRR, open loop gain and bandwidth. In today's lecture, we shall talk about the negative feedback in operational amplifiers. Negative feedback is one of the most useful concept in electronics particularly in op-amp applications. Negative feedback is a process whereby a portion of the output voltage of an amplifier is returned to the input with a phase angle that opposes or subtracts from the input signal. After completing this section, you should be able to explain negative feedback in op-amps, discuss why negative feedback is used and finally, describe the effects of negative feedback on certain op-amp parameters. This figure here illustrates the negative feedback. The inverting input effectively makes the feedback signal 180 degrees out of phase with the input signal. Why use negative feedback? As we have learned that the inherent open loop voltage gain of a typical op amp is very high, usually greater than 100,000. Therefore, an extremely small input voltage derives the op amp into its saturated output states. In fact, even the input offset voltage of the op amp can drive it into saturation. For example, assume V in is equal to 1 millivolt and AOL is equal to 100,000, then V in into AOL is equal to 1 millivolt into 100,000 and it comes out to be 100 volts. Since the output level of an op amp can never reach 100 volt, it is driven deep into saturation and the output is limited to its maximum output levels as illustrated in figure for both a positive and a negative input voltage of 1 millivolt. The usefulness of an op amp operated without negative feedback is generally limited to comparator applications. With negative feedback, the closed loop voltage gain can be reduced and controlled so that the op amp can function as a linear amplifier. In addition to providing a controlled, stable voltage gain, negative feedback also provides for control of the input and output impedances and amplifier bandwidth. Table here summarizes the general effects of negative feedback on op amp performance. Without negative feedback, voltage gain is too high for linear amplifier applications. Input impedance is relatively high, output impedance is relatively low and bandwidth is narrow because the gain is so high. In case of op amp, with negative feedback, voltage gain is set to desired value by feedback circuit. Input and output impedance can be increased or decreased and bandwidth is significantly wider. Op amp with negative feedback. An op amp can be connected using negative feedback to stabilize the gain and increase frequency response. Negative feedback takes a portion of the output and applies it back out of phase with the input, creating an effective reduction in gain. This closed loop gain is usually much less than the open loop gain and independent of it. The closed loop voltage gain is the voltage gain of an op amp with external feedback. The amplifier configuration 
consists of the op amp and an external negative feedback circuit that connects the output to the inverting input. The closed loop voltage gain is determined by the external component values and can be precisely controlled by them. Non-inverting amplifier. The figure here shows an op amp connected in a closed loop configuration as a non-inverting amplifier with a controlled amount of voltage gain. The input signal is applied to the non-inverting input. The output is applied back to the inverting input through the feedback circuit formed by the input resistor Ri and the feedback resistor Rf. This creates negative feedback as follows. Resistor Ri and Rf form a voltage divider circuit which reduces V out and connects the reduced voltage Vf to the inverting input. The feedback voltage is expressed as Vf is equal to Ri over Ri plus Rf into V out. As shown in this figure, the difference of the input voltage V in and the feedback voltage V f is the differential input to the op amp. The differential voltage is amplified by the open loop voltage gain of the op amp AOL and produces an output voltage expressed as V out is equal to AOL into V in minus V f. The attenuation B of the feedback circuit is equal to R i over R i plus R f. Substituting B V out for V f in the V out equation we get V out equal to A o l into V in minus B V out. Then applying basic algebra V out is equal to A o l into V in minus A o l into B V out. Then V out plus A o l into B V out is equal to A o l into V in and V out into 1 plus A o l into B is equal to a O L into V in. Since the overall voltage gain of the amplifier is V out over V in, it can be expressed as A O L over 1 plus A O L into B. The product A O L into B is typically much greater than 1. So, the equation simplifies to V out over V in approximately equal to a O L over A O L into B and it comes out to be 1 by B. The closed loop gain of the non-inverting amplifier is the reciprocal of the attenuation B of the feedback circuit and is given by A C L N I is equal to V out over V n and is approximately equal to 1 by B and is equal to R i plus R f over R i. Therefore, A C L N i is equal to 1 plus R f over R i. Notice that the closed loop voltage gain is not at all dependent on the op amps open loop voltage gain under the condition A O L B is much greater than 1. The closed loop gain can be set by selecting values of Rf and Ri. Voltage follower. The voltage follower configuration is a special case of the non-inverting amplifier where all of the output voltage is fed back to the inverting input by a straight connection as shown in the figure. As you can see, the straight feedback connection has a voltage gain of 1, which means there is no gain. The closed loop voltage gain of a non-inverting amplifier is 
1 by b as previously derived. Since b is equal to 1 for a voltage follower, the closed loop voltage gain of the voltage follower is ACL Vf is equal to 1. The most important features of the voltage follower configuration are its very high input impedance and its very low output impedance. These features make it a nearly ideal buffer amplifier for interfacing high impedance sources and low impedance loads. Inverting Amplifier An op-amp connected as an inverting amplifier with a controlled amount of voltage gain is shown in figure. The input signal is applied through a series input resistor Ri to the inverting input. Also, the output is fed back through RF to the same input. The non-inverting input is grounded. At this point, the ideal op-amp parameters mentioned earlier are useful in simplifying the analysis of the circuit. In particular, the concept of infinite input impedance is of great value. Infinite input impedance implies zero current at the inverting input. If there is zero current through the input impedance, then there must be no voltage drop between the inverting and non-inverting inputs. This means that the voltage at the inverting input is zero because the non-inverting input is grounded. This zero voltage at the inverting input terminal is referred to as virtual ground. This condition is illustrated in this figure. Since there is no current at the inverting input, the current through Ri and the current through Rf are equal as shown in this figure. Because the resistor is connected to virtual ground at the inverting input of the op-amp, the voltage across Ri equals Vn. Therefore, In is equal to Vn over Ri. Also, the voltage across Rf equals minus V out because of virtual ground and therefore IF is equal to minus V out over RF. Since IF is equal to IN, minus V out over RF is equal to VN over RI. Rearranging, rearranging the terms V out over VN is equal to minus RF over RI. Of course, V out over V in is the overall gain of the inverting amplifier. So, closed loop voltage gain of the inverting amplifier is given by this equation where ACL I is equal to minus RF over RI. This equation shows that the closed loop voltage gain of the inverting amplifier is the ratio of the feedback resistance to the input resistance. The closed loop gain is independent of the op-amp's internal open loop gain. Thus, the negative feedback stabilizes the voltage gain. The negative sign indicates inversion. Effects of negative feedback on op-amp impedances. The input impedance of a non-inverting amplifier can be developed with the aid of figure shown here. For this analysis, assume a small differential voltage Vd exists between the two inputs as indicated. This means that you cannot assume the op-amp's input impedance to be infinite or the input current to be zero. Express the input voltage as Vn is equal to Vd plus Vf. Substituting Bv out for the feedback voltage, Vf yields Vn is equal to Vd plus Bv out. Remember, B is the attenuation of the negative feedback circuit 
and is equal to R i over R i plus R f. Since V out is approximately equal to A o l into V d, here A o l is the open loop gain of the op amp, then V n is equal to V d plus B A o l into V d and is equal to 1 plus B A o l into V d. Now, substituting I n Z n for V d, V n becomes 1 plus B A o l into I n into Z n. Here, Z n is the open loop input impedance of the op amp without feedback connections. Transposing we get V n over I n equal to 1 plus B A O L into Z n. We know that V n over I n is the overall input impedance of a closed loop non inverting amplifier configuration. So, Z n n i is equal to 1 plus B A O L into Z n. This equation shows that the input impedance of the non inverting amplifier configuration with negative feedback is much greater than the internal input impedance of the op amp without feedback. Output impedance An expression for output impedance of a non inverting amplifier can be developed with the aid of figure shown here. By applying Kirchhoff's voltage law to the output circuit, V out becomes equal to A O L into V D minus Z out into I out. The differential input voltage is V D equal to V N minus V F. Therefore, by assuming that A O L into V D is much greater than Z out into I out you can express the output voltage as given by this equation where V out is approximately equal to A o l into V n minus V f. Substituting B v out for the feedback voltage V f yields V out approximately equal to A o l into V n minus B v out. Expanding and factorizing yields V out equal to A o l into V n minus A o l into B v out. A o l V n is approximately equal to V out plus A o l into B v out and is approximately equal to 1 plus A o l into B into V out. Since the output impedance of the non inverting amplifier configuration is Z out N i and is equal to V out over I out, you can substitute Z out N i into I out for V out. Therefore, A o l into V n becomes equal to 1 plus A o l into B into Z out N i into I out. Dividing both sides by I out, A o l into V n divided by I out is equal to 1 plus A o l into B into Z out N i. The term on the left is the internal output impedance of the op amp because without feedback A o l into V n is equal to V out. Therefore, Z out becomes equal to 1 plus A o l into B into Z out N i. Thus, Z out N i is equal to Z out divided by 1 plus A o l into B. This equation shows that the output impedance of the non inverting amplifier configuration with negative feedback is much less than the internal output impedance of the op amp without feedback because Z out is divided by the factor 1 plus 
A O L into B. Impedances of the inverting amplifier. The input and output impedances of an inverting op amp configuration are developed with the aid of the circuit shown in this figure. Both the input signal and the negative feedback are applied through resistors to the inverting terminal as shown. The input impedance for an inverting amplifier is given by this equation where Zn i is approximately equal to R i. This is because the inverting input of the op amp is at virtual ground and the input source simply sees R i to ground as shown in this figure. Output impedance. As with a non-inverting amplifier, the output impedance of an inverting amplifier is decreased by the negative feedback. In fact, the expression is the same as for the non-inverting case that is Z out i is equal to Z out over 1 plus A O L into B. The output impedance of both the non-inverting and the inverting amplifier configurations is very low. In fact, it is almost zero in practical cases. Because of this near zero output impedance, any load impedance within limits can be connected to the op amp output and not change the output voltage. The limits for the load impedance are determined by the maximum peak to peak swing of the output and the current limit of the op amp. So friends, here we come to the end of our discussion in this lecture and therefore we sum up. We learnt in this lecture that negative feedback occurs when a portion of the output voltage is connected back to the inverting input such that it subtracts from the input voltage thus reducing the voltage gain but increasing the stability and bandwidth. There are three basic op amp configurations inverting, non-inverting and voltage follower. The three basic op amp configurations employ negative feedback. Closed loop voltage gain is the gain of an op amp with external feedback. A non-inverting amplifier configuration has higher input impedance and lower output impedance than the op amp without feedback. An inverting amplifier configuration has input impedance approximately equal to the input resistor Ri and the output impedance approximately equal to the output impedance of the op amp itself. So friends, this is it for today. See you in the next lecture with more on operation amplifiers. Thank you very much. Thank you.